This is the way. This is the way. This is the way. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 Pedro Pascal roles. I don't know anything about that. That can't be true. You come all the way down here just to call me a liar. For this list, we'll be looking at the Chilean American actors' best performances as complex villains, stoic heroes, and an increasing number of reluctant father figures. What's your favorite Pedro Pascal performance? Let us know in the comments. Number 10. Maxwell Lord, Wonder Woman, 1984 The sequel to Patty Jenkins' Wonder Woman arrived on HBO Max on Christmas Day 2020. And while fans weren't too impressed with the film, Pedro Pascal's villainous role as Maxwell Lord received praise. Life is good, but it can be better. Oh my gosh, from TV, oh my gosh, you're the, you're the oil guy. The oil guy, yeah, I'll right. take it. The wealthy businessman seeks out the ancient dream stone for its wish-granting power, using it to become the stone itself and save his failing oil company. Max Lord isn't evil per se, but his pursuit of the American dream made him greedy. I wish to be you, the dream stone itself. Pascal's nuanced performance made this otherwise unlikable character a sympathetic villain. The actor captured the desperation of a mogul with a rags-to-riches backstory and a father trying to give his son a better life. Thank you. I love you so much. And I promise you one day, everything is going to make sense. And one day, he'll thank me. Plus, seeing Pedro Pascal don 80s-era attire was quite the treat. Number 9. Dave York – The Equalizer 2 Pedro Pascal played many villains in his career, but his character in The Equalizer 2 just might be the most remorseless of them all. Susan. Thank you. you okay? Yeah. Merci. Right behind you. In this Denzel Washington-led revenge thriller sequel, Pascal plays Defense Intelligence Agency DIA operative Dave York, a former teammate of protagonist Robert McCall. You got fat, Dave. York is a husband father and ruthless mercenary willing to kill anyone he needs to. And after he murders someone important to McCall, he's at the top of the hit list. Pascal definitely held his own while sharing scenes with Washington, and the two had great chemistry as foes with a history. Mac, whatever it is, whatever you need. I'm in. <sighs> Same mud. Same blood. Number 8. Jack Daniels, Kingsman, The Golden Circle. In the Kingsman franchise's second go around, Pedro Pascal joins the star studded cast as Jack Daniels, aka Agent Whiskey of the Statesman, the American counterpart to the Kingsman. Callahan, meet Agent Whiskey. Kid, looks like we're hooking up with a chick at a rock concert. My favorite kind of mission. The Burt Reynolds-esque cowboy helps his brethren go up against the titular drug cartel, the Golden Circle. One of the things people love the most about Pascal is his playfulness, and he clearly had fun with this mustachioed character, even learning how to use Whiskey's signature lasso. Manners maketh man. Let me translate that for you. <laughs> The actor made the morally gray agent a treat to watch, and even among big names like Halle Berry and Jeff Bridges, Pascal stood out with this memorable performance. You two need to fix this codename thing. And with all due respect, sir, I don't think Galahad Sr. is ready to return to field work. Uh, 
Become a Watch Mojo channel member and get exclusive perks like Mojo emojis, loyalty badges, priority comment replies, and exclusive members only content, including live list rankings with the Mojo staff and peeks behind the scenes. Don't miss out. Number seven, Javi Gutierrez, the unbearable weight of massive talent. Speaking of standing out, Pedro also shines in this action comedy alongside none other than Nicolas Cage, who stars as himself. Mr. Cage, Yeah, I'm... excuse me, real quick. The guy that owns this house, what's his name? Javi. Yeah, Javi. Is Javi going to want me to, uh, you know? I'm not sure I understand. Look, billionaire Javi Gutierrez is the ultimate Nick Cage superfan, so he drops some million dollars for the megastar to attend his birthday party. However, the CIA thinks Javi has ulterior motives. Mr. Cage, we're with the U.S. government. We need your help. The man you're staying with is the head of a violent international arms cartel. Wait, 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 wait. Javi. As an admirer of Cage himself, this was the perfect role for Pedro, especially a character with such a good heart. The scene stealer brings the laughs, as well as heartwarming moments. Javi may be a little wild and suspicious at times, but his undying love of Nick Cage never wavers. In terms of genre, I, I, I like comedies, but not when it's just two people sitting around talking. Oh man, I can't stand talky comedies. You gotta have some plot to drive it forward. And the chemistry between Pedro and the real-life Cage is just as electric. Number six, Francisco Catfish Morales, Triple Frontier. A group of former Delta Force operatives traveled to South America with a plan to steal millions in cash from a drug lord. I've got a lawyer in St. John's who set up an offshore shell security operation that's ready to pay out a salary and bonuses for the rest of our lives. It'll just come in like any other paycheck. But things turn ugly, and the likelihood that they'll make it out of the country alive becomes uncertain. Pedro Pascal plays Francisco Catfish Morales, or Frankie, a retired pilot focusing on his growing family. Anyway, I lost my license. I can't even fly right now. Well, I don't need a pilot with a license. I'm in with the army down there. I just need a pilot that I can trust. When his military brothers need a pilot for the mission, he reluctantly agrees to go along. Pedro imbues Catfish with strength and loyalty, showing a man who sticks by his friends in the worst situations. As you put on the trigger, you know it and I know it. I killed those people. No, you didn't. We all did. He also got the chance to act alongside his old pal Oscar Isaac, even living together as they filmed in Hawaii. Number 5. Ezra Prospect This visually striking sci-fi indie film sees Pedro as an enigmatic astronaut named Ezra. Nice to meet you, Damon. I'm Ezra. <laughs> I can't tell you how refreshing it is. <sighs> To encounter another talker. <laughs> While in the forest on an alien moon, he meets Damon and his daughter C mining for gems as he and his silent partner are doing the same. The rival prospectors duke it out, leaving Ezra and C with no choice but to make a deal to ensure their survival. I suggest you take it because I will kill you otherwise and don't think that I won't. Give me a kitten, we can talk. Though it's not one of his most well-known roles, Pascal makes Ezra chilling yet intriguing, and not your typical sci-fi villain. You're a killer. I am indeed. But are you? It was all in the name of self-preservation, Bertie. It was nothing personal. And Prospect was one of his earliest projects where he radiated protective, single dad energy. Number 4. Din Djarin, The Mandalorian and The Book of Boba Fett For anyone who wasn't familiar with Pedro Pascal before 2019, that all changed when he was cast as the titular bounty hunter in Disney Plus's The Mandalorian. His enthusiasm outweighs his discretion. Please lower your blaster. Have them lower theirs first. We have you four to one. I like those odds. 
The series begins with Mando, birth named Din Djarin, on a mission to retrieve the child, aka Grogu, aka Baby Yoda. But when he learns that the force-wielding creature could meet a gruesome end, he keeps him and intends to take him home. Step aside. I'm going to my ship. <laughs> you put the bounty down and perhaps I'll let you pass. The kid's coming with me. If you truly care about the kid, then you put it on the speeder. Though hesitant at first, the man of few words strikes a father-son bond with the little guy, a dynamic we'll see more of in Pedro's work. Sure, he's stubborn and hardened, but there's more to the man beneath the helmet, proven by Pedro's ability to convey so much emotion with just his voice and physicality. That's who you belong with. He's one of your kind. I'll see you again. I promise. Number 3. Oberyn Martell, Game of Thrones Although his character didn't live too long in the Game of Thrones universe, Pedro Pascal certainly made his mark in the series, entering and exiting in fabulous fashion with tons of fun in between. Why did you come to King's Landing, Prince Oberyn? I was invited to the royal wedding. I thought we were speaking truth. The last time I was in the capital was many years ago. Another wedding. The actor appeared in all but three episodes of season four as the intelligent and impulsive Oberyn Martel, the younger brother of Prince Doran. Also known by his nickname, the Red Viper, Oberyn travels to King's Landing hell-bent on avenging his sister's death, which doesn't end well for him. And what about what I want? Justice for my sister and her children. There were many, many deaths on GOT, and he has one of the most memorable by far. Pascal strikes the perfect balance of lustful, likable, and intimidating. Have they told you who I am? Some dead man! <laughs> it's no surprise why this role skyrocketed him to stardom. Number 2. Joel Miller, The Last of Us the highly anticipated HBO Max series The Last of Us premiered in January 2023 to wide acclaim for the show itself, but also for Pascal's leading part as Joel Miller. Oh, he loves you. He's dependent on me. Not the same. I think it's the same. It's definitely the same. The first episode alone spans decades, and we see Joel go from having birthday breakfast with his daughter to tragically losing her that night. We're not sick. The actor expertly handles a range of emotions, seamlessly transitioning into his trademark haunted stoicism 20 years after the cordyceps outbreak. The actor also has great chemistry with co-star Bella Ramsey, matching her character's attitude with her own dad sass. What are you doing? Killing time. Well, what am I supposed to do? I'm sure you'll figure that out. Your watch is broken. Number 1. Javier Peña, Narcos Pedro Pascal landed his first series regular role in the Netflix original series Narcos, starring as DEA agent Javier Peña. Go ahead. This is Murphy. Murphy. This is Mill Group. They advise Colombian military on communist threats in the countryside. Hey, those are classified. Oh, they're declassified. Set in 1980s Colombia, the series follows Peña and his partner Steve Murphy, both based on real people, as they hunt down infamous drug lord Pablo Escobar and the Medellin cartel. When he's not tracking down Sicarios, he's meeting up with informants. Lana del tío Sam, por la información que nunca me viste. In other words, Agent Peña has a full dance card. After the first two seasons, Pascal became the leading man, with his character taking over the series' narration from Murphy. And whereas Escobar craved the spotlight, these guys stayed in the shadows. The actor gave a riveting performance as the charismatic loner, letting his dedication to stopping drug trafficking stay at the forefront while giving him more complex layers. Did you enjoy this video? Check out these other clips from Watch Mojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.